is the strength of his people, a saving refuge for the one he has anointed. Save your people, Lord, and bless your heritage, and govern them forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to receive these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you come to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you bring peace to us sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the second book of Kings. In the tenth month of the ninth year of Zedekiah's reign, on the tenth day of the month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and his whole army had advanced against Jerusalem and camped around it and built siege walls on every side. The siege of the city continued until the eleventh year of Zedekiah. On the ninth day of the fourth month, when famine had gripped the city and the people had no more bread, the city walls were breached. Then the king and all the soldiers left the city by night through the gate between the two walls that was near the king's garden. Since the Chaldeans had the city surrounded, they went in the direction of the Arab. But the Chaldean army pursued the king and overtook him in the desert near Jericho, abandoned by his whole army. The king was therefore arrested and brought to Riblah to the king of Babylon, who pronounced sentence on him. He had Zedekiah's sons slain before his eyes. Then he blinded Zedekiah, bound him with fetters, and had him brought to Babylon. On the seventh day of the fifth month, this was in the nineteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Nebuzaradan, captain of the bodyguard, came to Jerusalem as the representative of the king of Babylon. He burned the house of the Lord, the palace of the king, and all the houses of Jerusalem. Every large building was destroyed by fire. Then the Chaldean troops who were with the captain of the guard tore down the walls that surrounded Jerusalem. Then Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, led into exile the last of the people remaining in the city and those who had deserted to the king of Babylon and the last of the artisans. But some of the country's poor, Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, left behind as vine dressers and farmers. The word of the Lord. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. By the streams of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. On the aspens of that land we hung up our harps. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. Though there are our captors asked of us, the lyrics of our songs and our despoilers urged us to be joyous. Sing for us the songs of Zion. How can we sing a song of the Lord in a foreign land? If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand be forgotten. May my tongue cleave to my palate if I remember you not. If I place not Jerusalem, 
ahead of my joy. today's gospel, a sick man with leprosy approaches Jesus and says, Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. Jesus responds simply, I will do it. Be made clean. And his leprosy was cleansed immediately. There are a couple of lessons to take away from this passage. The first is the complete trust that the sick man had in Jesus. He desired healing and in courage and confidence, he made his request known to Jesus and was healed. We should approach Christ with the same courage to make our desires known and the same confidence that Christ can fulfill them. The second lesson comes from St. Augustine, and it's seeing the cleansing of the leper as a sign of the sacrament of reconciliation. According to St. Augustine, the leprosy represents mortal sin. Just as a leper was excluded from the community until they were healed, we too exclude ourselves from full participation in the church when we are in a state of mortal sin. And just like leprosy, <clears throat> sin can also be contagious when we influence others and seek to justify our own sin, such as causing scandal or not having true contrition. It is only through a prescribed process of cleansing that a person can be reinstated into the community through the help of the Levitical priests. Our priests today have a similar role in that they are the instruments in which Christ works through to heal, <clears throat> to heal us of our spiritual diseases, of our mortal sin, and reinstate us into full participation in the church. St. Jose Maria Escriva, whose feast day the church celebrates today, along with many other saints, have referred to Christ as the divine physician. We have spoken in the past about how Christ fulfills, how he teaches, how he satisfies, how he sanctifies. But today we talk about how he also heals. He heals our brokenness. He heals us from the things that spiritually ail us. He heals our wounds. We need only turn to him. We turn to him in the sacrament of reconciliation, but today, right now, in this moment while we're at Mass, we turn to him in the Eucharist. Be not afraid to request any healing that you may need. Let us conclude in a prayer by St. Jose Maria Escriva that can be found in the meditation of the day in the Magnificat. Lord, you have cured so many souls. Help me to recognize you as a divine physician. When I have you in my heart, or when I contemplate your presence in a tabernacle. Amen.
Let us pray that the church might reach out to all the outcasts of society with the healing love of Christ. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray that those who have political power may use it justly and wisely on behalf of all the people. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray that all people may be valued not for what they have or do, but for who they are. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray that doctors and nurses may be motivated always by a true concern for their patients. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray that we may see the face of Christ in all those we meet today. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the repose of the soul of Romeo and Canto, Claudia La Basilica, Carlos Vergara, and for the special intentions of John Riel Cadasio and Rhea and John Rukowski. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. And for any intentions we hold silently in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the Lord's sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise. Grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection with we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with, with unwavering hope. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you, and without end, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the Father of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the new ball, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, 
and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity with Francis, our Pope, with Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, Jose, Escriva, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be The act of spiritual communion for those who cannot be physically here with us at this time. My dearest Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed day.